Hey, what's up, Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone. We're gonna take everybody's favorite game, Minecraft, and everybody's favorite technology, 3D printing, jam them together, and see what comes out the other side. Stay tuned. All right, well, in case you guys didn't notice from the title of the video, we are printing a 3D diamond sword and a 3D diamond pickaxe from our favorite game, Minecraft. So I went ahead and picked up the models already and I have them handy in STL format. So now we're gonna fire up Kura. This is Ultimaker's really cool slicer software. It's designed to basically take a 3D model and then convert it into the tool path that tells the 3D printer how to move the print head and print each layer at a time. It's absolutely spectacular. If you're not familiar with 3D printing, check out my other videos. It is really, really cool stuff. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is add our two models to the build platform so you guys can see what they look like. All right, here we have the diamond axe and the diamond sword, both in STL format. Drag those over to the platform. And Kura is actually really fast now. They've made some huge improvements to the software. So just looking at this here, you can see the way that they're placed on the platform, that's not advisable to print them that way. The Ultimaker doesn't like printing stuff that has huge impossible overhangs. And then you have to use something called support material. And that's not good. So what we really wanna do is let's go ahead and remove one of these. And then we're gonna go ahead and lay the other one flat down on the platform. So lay flat, it's really easy software to use. You can see it lays it down on the bed. So we're gonna print them in this orientation because this is gonna give us the cleanest result. Now with 3D printing, if you've watched my other videos, there is a little bit of an art and science to it. I mean, you do have to think about when you're designing your model, how you want it to print, or you have to use a lot of support material, which then you have to clean up afterwards. So if you make smart decisions in the beginning, you save yourself a lot of hassle and a lot of material later on. So I'm gonna do this, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the pickaxe. And I'm gonna go ahead and put those two videos together so you can see them side by side. All right, so on the top we have the diamond sword printing and on the bottom we're printing out the diamond pickaxe. And these were both, both these prints were done one after the other and then I just time lapsed them together. Now there is a slight difference in how they're printing. If you look at the sword up above, I'm actually using something called brim. If you see how it printed out that grid material before it started actually printing the sword, it's basically doing that to pin it down to the bed so that it doesn't peel away. Um, now on the bottom where I'm printing the pickaxe, I'm actually not using any support at all. And that's why you can see it printing the individual tiles because as it's printing, they get closer and closer together because they're tapered. So both these methods worked fantastically, but honestly, I should have just printed the sword without using the brim support to save material because it wasn't necessary in that. Both of these prints have been accelerated in time-lapse, which you're seeing right now is representative 10,000% increase in speed. To give you an idea, the sword took about 12 hours to print and the pickaxe took about 14 hours to print in total. Now, both of these prints use up the majority of the build platform. The Ultimaker can almost do nine by nine by nine inch cubed which is a huge build volume for most printers. Now, when you use up the whole volume like that on the build platform and it's building up, you need a really precise machine because as it's going up in levels, it's having to cover that huge area and stay pinpoint accurate the entire time. And the Ultimaker has no problems doing this. Now when you're printing on this printer, you can choose how much infill you want to use, and that's the solid filling of the object. So if you want to make it really lightweight but not as strong, you can use less material, you just lower the infill. But for these prints, I do believe I was using a 50 plus percent infill, which is highly dense because I wanted them to actually be like incredibly strong. But like for instance, if you wanted light to pass through them differently, you could use less infill and it would become more translucent and allow light to travel through. Now, if this video looks familiar to you and you think you've seen it before, you actually may have because I did broadcast this live on Twitch while I was sleeping, Twitch TV. So if you're one of the people that actually watched this thing print, please comment down below in the video. I'd actually really like to know about it. And if you're not familiar with my Twitch channel, go check it out. The link's in the description.
If you're new to 3D printing, make sure you check out my other videos because I do show a lot of cool details on each print depending on what I'm doing. But to give you just a really quick overview of how they work, they basically have a filament and it's on a spool. And this filament's made out of ranging materials from plastic, ABS, PLA, or to stuff like wood fiber. You can even print in rubber materials like flexible materials, clear materials like acrylic. You can print uh, in nylon. Uh, there's some other materials like Color Fab XT, which are like a higher melting point clear material. But the cool thing is there are a ton of different materials that you can actually use. And this printer supports adjusting the temperature of the print head to support all of them. And changing out the materials is as simple as pulling the line out and feeding in a new reel and putting it on the back. It's not even as complicated as changing the ink cartridges in most printers. All right, it looks like our prints are getting pretty close to complete right here. Now, you'll notice that the video actually will cut out on the ax down below. I ran out of material while it was printing overnight. So unfortunately, it only printed half of the pickaxe. But luckily for me, I was gonna use it as a decoration, so only one side was gonna be facing out anyways, so that this didn't cause me any problems. Hey, if you guys have any questions or suggestions on what I should print next, please leave them down in the comments or better yet, come over and follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I am a highly social bug. So if you come over there, chances are, if you ask me something, you're gonna get a response. I try to be as interactive as I can with 24,000 subscribers and I put forth a huge effort. So don't get discouraged if you don't get a reply immediately, it will happen. The funny thing is, I've seen this thing print several spools worth of material, and this just never gets old. And here is the finished product. Here we have one diamond pickaxe, and it's sitting right up on top of my monitor. I just used some double stick tape to hold it in place. And I have a light behind the monitor that just provides some backlighting, and it also kind of glows through the pickaxe a little bit, which is awesome. Now, depending on how much infill you use on the pickaxe, you can adjust how much light goes through it. And uh, so I might play around with that later on and print, try printing in some other materials also. But I think it turned out magnificent. It's perfectly uniform. I didn't require any cleanup. And here we have the diamond sword and it is absolutely phenomenal i love the way this thing works and again just use some simple double stick tape and it's a hell of a decoration at some point i'm going to go get some hobby paint and paint each square independently so it turns out looking just completely awesome and realistic now the main reason i did this was because i already have a decoration on my larger screens which i'm going to show you here in a second that looks a lot like it but it also costs like 60 or 70 bucks to acquire this stuff and here it is. There's my foam pickaxe, which honestly, I like the 3D printed one better because it has more contours to it. And over on the other side, you have the actual sword. And I did the same thing, just double stick those to the 46 inch screens. So it's kind of a cool theme now that's reoccurring throughout the man cave and I love it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.